The Lazarus pits are natural forming pits that exist in the DC universe, and they're filled with chemicals that can heal pretty much any injury, and some can even bring the dead back to life. Now these are famously used by Ra's al Ghul to keep him young for centuries, and to bring him back to life on occasion. Though the pits do have one drawback, and that is that they send the people who use them insane. Now this madness can be temporary, and it usually is, but the problem is it also corrupts a person the more they use it. And it's because of this that Batman doesn't use the pits, as he doesn't want to be corrupted by them. It's also part of the reason that he's never tried to resurrect his parents with a Lazarus pit, as he is scared what it would do to their minds. But even so, over the past decades, Batman has used the pits from time to time. And so this video is going to go over every time that Batman has ever used a Lazarus pit. Batman Beyond In the Batman Beyond TV show, Bruce Wayne is old, and like most people who grow old, he has retired, and in his case this means that he is no longer Batman, and has passed over the reins to Terry McGuinness. However, that all changes when Talia al Ghul comes to him with an offer that he can't refuse, eternal youth. And although he is hesitant, he ultimately says yes. After all, who can say no to a chance to be young again? And so Bruce undergoes a Lazarus Pit treatment that takes him back to his youth. And you'd think that Bruce would be happy about this, but no. He says that it's unnatural and that he has to stop and leave. It's unnatural. A cheat. But you're strong again. No. If I stay here, I'll be weaker than ever. Though Talia al Ghul's henchmen stop him from leaving, and it's revealed that Ra's al Ghul has actually switched minds with his daughter, so Ra's al Ghul is in his daughter's body. I did not want you to find out this way. Detective. And it is then revealed that the only reason that Ra's al Ghul has contacted Bruce Wayne now is because he wants to put his brain into Bruce Wayne's body, which makes sense, because as Ra's al Ghul says, You always were the perfect specimen, detective. Though of course, Bruce Wayne manages to escape and he goes back to Gotham. And because he only used the pit for one treatment, his youth is only temporary, because in this continuity it takes several attempts to keep him young for longer. And so soon after this he returns to his old grumpy self. Arkham City In Batman Arkham City, the Joker is dying, thanks to all the chemicals that he has injected himself with in the previous game, Arkham Asylum. And so he decides to inject Batman with the same blood, and put the same poison inside of Batman so they both die. He does this of course to motivate Batman to get a cure. And so Batman goes searching for the cure, but he needs a sample of Ra's al Ghul's blood to make it work. And so he goes to the League of Assassins, and says that he wants to take Ra's al Ghul up on his offer to take over leadership of the League of Assassins. But before he can become the leader, he has to undergo a trial. And the first trial is to drink a goblet filled with Lazarus Pit chemicals. Now, it's not enough to cure him of the poison that's in his blood, but it's enough to keep him alive for a few more hours, because he was literally about to die before he drank it. But as I say, the chemicals let him live on so that he can go on to find the cure. And this is the only time where he drinks the pit's chemicals, as he usually has to be fully submersed in it for it to take effect. Superman and Batman Generations In this comic book, Ra's al Ghul discovers a way to become truly immortal, with only one use of a Lazarus pit and no side effects of madness. And the details for this are essentially that two people have to enter a Lazarus pit and only one of them will leave, as the other will die. Now, Ra's al Ghul and Batman end up going into the pit, with Batman emerging as the victorious one. And he isn't technically immortal though, because he does still age, but he only ages one year for every century that passes. So while it's not true immortality, it's still a pretty long life. Son of Batman in this film, there are a lot of Lazarus pits. Deathstroke has managed to kill Ra's al Ghul, and he's taken over most of the League of Shadows. Though Talia al Ghul still lives, and she has a lot of the Shadows in her army. Unfortunately for her, Deathstroke beats her and captures her. He then uses her as bait to lure in her son, Damian Wayne. And when he arrives, he shoots and kills Talia al Ghul. Run, Damian! <laughs> And while Damien and Deathstroke fight, Batman carries her body into a Lazarus pit to heal her. But he's also in the pit himself, and although we don't see any great changes to him physically, the pit would still have had an effect on his body, and would probably help to heal old battle wounds that he may have. Now this is a small use of the pit, and it's mainly for Talia of course, but he does still use it, and he does still get in it. Though I do have to say that Talia may not technically be dead when she enters the pit, because in this universe it appears that the pits can't bring people back from the dead, they can only bring people back from very, very, very close to death. Batman Birth of the Demon In this comic book, Batman is getting rid of all the Lazarus pits in the world. 
in an attempt to put an end to Ra's al Ghul once and for all. Though while stopping one Lazarus pit from being dug, he has unfortunately exposed a toxic waste, in what appears to be a lethal dose. And later, when Ra's al Ghul comes to another pit to rejuvenate himself, as Ra's al Ghul is dying as well, the two fight. And Ra's al Ghul is victorious, managing to drive a spade through Batman's chest. But though he thinks Batman is beaten, he is able to get back up and tackle Ra's al Ghul, and the two of them go into the Lazarus Pit together. Now when Batman wakes up, it's the next day, and he is completely healed from his injuries and from his toxic waste poisoning, and Ra's al Ghul and his daughter are gone, leaving us to conclude that Ra's al Ghul has also been rejuvenated by the pit, and he and his daughter have absconded. Batman and Robin Now after Batman died during the final Crisis event, Dick Grayson becomes Batman, and at one point, he decides to put Batman's body in a Lazarus pit, just to see if it's the real Batman. And when the body rises from the pit, it is in a murderous rage and attacks everyone around them. And because he tries to murder everyone, Dick Grayson concludes that this is not the real Batman, as Batman would never kill. And he's been in this murderous rage for so long that any effects of madness from the pit would have worn off. So this cannot be Batman. And of course, he's right. Batman is not actually dead, but when Darkseid struck him with his Omega Beams, he sent him on the Omega Sanction, which basically sent him backwards in time, and replaced his present body with a clone of Bruce Wayne. Now, technically speaking, this isn't Batman using a pit, as it's actually Batman's clone, but I still thought it was worth mentioning. The Resurrection of Ra's al Ghul Now, this one is debatable as a Lazarus Pit use, as it's technically the Fountain of Youth in Nanda Parbat, not a Lazarus Pit. But we'll go over it anyway. Basically, Ra's al Ghul has died and come back to a crumbling body, and he needs a new body in order to stay alive. So he captures both Tim Drake and Damian Wayne, and tells Batman that he's going to take one of their bodies and put his mind into it. But Batman can pick which one. So Batman counters with another deal. Instead of him taking one of their bodies, Batman will take Ra's al Ghul to Nanda Parbat and the Fountain of Youth, and this will restore Ra's al Ghul's crumbling body, meaning he won't need to switch into a new one. And Ra's al Ghul agrees, and so the two of them go there, and Batman fights Ra's al Ghul's father, who's known as Sensei, and Sensei kind of beats the hell out of Batman, breaking his arm, blinding him, and stabbing him. Batman has been studying fighting for decades and is incredibly skilled, but this Sensei has been studying it for centuries. But Batman waits until the old man gets tired, as he can't keep it up forever thanks to his advanced age. And using this, Batman is able to get in a few hits and take Sensei into the Fountain of Youth with him. Now, the Fountain of Youth only works on the pure of heart. And as Sensei is not pure of heart, the pit burns him up and kills him. Batman, however, is healed of his injuries and de-aged slightly. So whether you want to count this as a Lazarus pit is up to you, but it does heal him and it does make him younger, so it does kind of count. And Ra's al Ghul has said before that he thinks this Fountain of Youth is linked to his Lazarus pits, so they kind of are related. And that is every time that Batman has used a Lazarus pit. Which one of these is your personal favourite? And if there are any other times that Batman has used a Lazarus pit that you know of, please let us know in the comments. And I'd just like to say a quick thank you to those who made this video possible by donating to the Needle Mouse Productions page on Patreon. And as always, thanks for watching, and feel free to subscribe, share, like, and comment.